This is Games for the Super Intelligent by James Fix. This is an older book, and in this short video, I'm going to show you my copy of this book. So you can see it's really, really dirty and really, really old. Let's go ahead and open it up here. And looks like this particular copy was a gift to someone. I think it says Christmas 1979 or 78. Let's see if we can peel the sticker off and, and see. 1978, wow. Wow, that was a long time ago, right? So 1978 and it says 375. Maybe that was like the, uh, the price. To Craig, may you never be bored with much love and encouragement, Dad and Diane. Interesting. So this was a gift to Craig for Christmas. This was his Christmas present in 1978. Kind of crazy, right? The history that these old books have. All right, let's keep going and see what this book is about. Games for the Super Intelligent by James F. Fix, Doubleday and Company, Inc., Garden City, New York. The inside of the book isn't dirty, but the, the outside, I just, I don't know if that's mold or it's dirt or it got wet, um, not very good. For my father, who started me wondering, and then here's the copyright, 1972. Let's take a look at this. Confessions of a thoroughly puzzled man. For as long as I can remember, I have taken a special, some might say an almost irrational delight in puzzles, games and problems of all sorts. At one time I devised, or at least tried to devise, formulas for some wondrously worthless calculations for predicting with what frequency an automobile odometer would show a symmetrical number, such as these here. Or finding the sum of a string of consecutive numbers for computing the interrelationship of speed, spin, direction, and depth of a cross-court backhand. That one somehow never worked out very well. And I can still remember how I felt while taking a college physics course when the professor wrote on the blackboard a formidably complicated formula that turned out, as soon as one understood it, to be absolutely startling in its elegance and simplicity. I knew at that moment that I was looking on Beauty Bear. Yeah, he found beauty in physics. Cool, right? So he talks a little bit. There are Riverside, Connecticut, September 1971, right? Super old. And here are the contents, the pleasures of intelligence and some incidental perils, puzzles and games to start going quietly crazy by. Words to the wise and from them too. Those wonderful laws of logic and how they can fool you every time. The fine frustrating art of number, numbermanship. The super intelligent how they got that way and how they stay that way. So you think you're pretty bright. Well, maybe you are, and then the helpers, and you have answers here to the puzzles. Pretty cool, I'll try to leave a link uh, in the description to this book, by the way, in case you wanna pick up a copy. Yeah, what's this say? Practically all of us, whether we're bright or dull, tend to take it for granted that intelligence is a good thing, and a lack of intelligence is a bad thing, period. A little reflection will show, however, that it is not nearly that simple. Though very bright people seldom receive much sympathy for their brightness, a little incidental derision maybe, but not sympathy. They suffer along under handicaps undreamed of by their less gifted brethren. Nor are these, as one might suppose, simply the burdens imposed by a heightened awareness, a greater sense of life's complexities, a more poetic and sensitive tuned soul, etc., etc., etc. They are, on the contrary, provably distressing in quite practical ways. Ways that bedevil virtually all those whose IQs have never learned to play possum. I think that this book is written at a level that is a little bit like the language here. Let's read this here. That it's, you know, it's not, it's written, there's a lot of different books out there. This is written very you know, intelligently, I guess, because it's games for the super intelligent. The typical puzzle, especially the kind most admired by the super intelligent, has its roots in mathematics, in one or another variety of logic, or in words, or it may be based on a combination of these. The puzzles in this chapter, intended as an introduction to the fine art of puzzlemanship, offer a pleasantly maddening melange of those three elements. Practically all of them, incidentally, are from the personal collections of people who are brighter than 98% of the population. So be forewarned, a few of them are easy, but they do constitute a useful batiker to the landscape of puzzling. So you have different puzzles and stuff. So kind of an interesting book, Squares and Triangles. 
Make two squares and four triangles from eight matches without breaking or bending them. Okay, so there's your, your challenge. And this has answers in the back, it says. Let's take a look there. Answers to puzzles, right? So here you have the answers to the puzzles. Cool, right? Kind of an interesting, interesting book. So yeah, I just thought I'd make this short video to show you this book. It's pretty cool, right? Subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you want to learn math, uh, links are in the description. They're on Udemy, but use my links or use my links from my website, mathsorcerer.com. Take care.